So this practice of jhanic noting, um, this is a practice I developed a couple of years ago, um, and it was very much inspired by the technique essence noting that Kenneth Folk um, developed. I found there was something about the structure of that practice of having kind of the choice to work with these different aspects of experience and to be able to focus in on a particular aspect like in in essence noting we're really listening we're really focused on listening that's you could say that's the the um the thing that you come back to the anchor of the practice and then when there's a positive mind state in that practice you can note that too which kind of encourages the positive mind states and then there's this really awesome mechanism of releasing or allowing the unpleasant states of mind and essence noting is very much focused on, yeah, on the mind, on the essential nature of mind. And that's why we focus on mind states. And it's not that those are disconnected from the body, but it's more mentally focused in that technique. And um, so I wanted to find a way to take sort of the, what felt like the, um, uh, the way that that practice was engineered and a, see if it could be applied to to absorption practice, concentration, or jhana practice, um, which just means absorption or trance. And um, part of that came from a, a genuine curiosity about how do you cultivate these meditative absorptions, these deep states of bliss and well-being and peace in a social meditation context? Um, now I actually see pretty clearly, like it just happens when people are present together, It you know, these, these states actually emerge quite naturally uh, as a function of presence and attention. When, it, when, when people gather their attention and are present, whether it's alone or together, my experience is these states arise naturally. But this practice is meant to kind of accelerate that or to bring focus to that. Um, and so it's very much like the essence noting technique in that we're going to have these three choices to pick from in doing the practice. In the first uh, choice, you can always, when it's your turn or you feel moved, you can always note breathing. So that'll be like the, the, the kind of anchor, the object. We'll use the breath as our, as our meditative subject. And so at any point, you can tune in to and notice breathing. Breathing. And when you hear other people note breathing, of course, that'll remind you that you're breathing. So that's the kind of shared focus. And then when you notice any physical or mental sensations that are correlated with or connected with for you an increase in concentration, whether you notice maybe pleasant tingling, you could note that tingling, or you notice joy arising, joy. Or you notice peace, you could note that peace, ease, stilling, whatever it is in your body or mind that you notice that for you corresponds with an increase in concentration, what in the tradition would be called a jhanic factor. It's like an aspect of what makes up this absorption. Then you, you're, you're free to note that. And the idea is by noting it, we're, um, we're cultivating it, we're cultivating that which we notice. And when we cultivate, uh, when we note things, we cultivate the ability to notice as well, mindfulness itself, which is one of the uh, important factors of of, <laughs> of enlightenment in the, in the traditional model of Buddhism. So um, the third thing is, of course, there will be unpleasant body-mind states that arise. There'll be something like a aching in your back that'll suddenly grab your attention or suddenly you might feel sadness and or despair or something that feels like it pulls you away from the breath or from these more pleasant states of body mind that are for you associated with concentration deepening that and here we'll use the same move uh, as an essence noting where you can note releasing or allowing either you can release if it's possible to release great releasing letting it go. You can use other words that kind of fit that for you too. Letting go, dropping, any, any synonym of releasing is fine. And then allowing, letting it be, opening to it. 
trusting it, even embracing it. Anything that's a hindrance to concentration, we can actually let it go, or we can turn toward it and include it in our awareness. We can say not now, or we can say yes, this too. And what's useful about that is that part of how concentration, the development of concentration is described, it's a gathering of attention. It's a gathering of attention. We're pooling all of our attention together. We're bringing ourselves together, bringing our attention to a single point. So when something is distracting us, if we, if we go into battle with it, we actually fragment our attention further because we have to spend time and energy trying to push the damn thing away. Um, but instead, if we just open to it and we just let it be, uh, or we can just let it go, then, you know, then we, then we can recollect. Um, we can include whatever is on the path as part of it. We can unify with everything that's arising. That's the ultimate meaning of samadhi, one-pointed concentration that includes all points. There's no point left out of our, of our unified focus. We become absorbed with all that is. That's real concentration. Um, so we're using the breath, breathing, to help us center, ground attention in the body-mind. When you notice any states that are really pleasant and joyful, blissful, just anything that feels like you're really grooving, you can note that. Grooving. Joy. Ease. Settling. Any state of body or mind that correlates with an increase in concentration, please feel free to note that. And then if anything that arises that feels like it's distracting, you can, uh, in your body mind, you can, you can release or allow using whatever words make sense to you. <laughs> 